Certainly the weather lived up to its reputation here, but cleared sufficiently for the two captains, England's W.R. Hammond and India's Nawab of Fataudi, to go out and inspect the wicket. India won the toss and chose to put England in first. Hutton and Washbrook opened the innings, the former soon playing himself in with true attacking strokes, and after an hour's play, the score had risen to 50. When it advanced to 81, Washbrook was caught at wicket and Compton took his place. Helped by Hutton, Compton took the score to 156 before he was out leg before. Then followed England's great captain, to partner Hutton, who, with the score at 186, was caught at mid-wicket for a useful 67. Hardstaff and Hammond were not together for long, as the former was caught at short leg with only five runs to his credit. At the end of the first day's play, Hammond and Gibb were left in possession with a total of 236 for four. Hardstaff and Hammond were not together for long, as the former was caught at short leg with only five runs to his credit. At the end of the first day's play, Hammond and Gibb were left in possession with a total of 236 for four. On the opening of the second day, Hammond and Gibb brought the English total to 265. Bose was out first ball. Then Hammond himself, after making 69, was beaten by a lovely ball from Amanat. Bedzer and Pollard soon followed, and England's innings closed at 294. <laughs> India went in in the afternoon, and batting of a high class was the order of the day. Hammond persisted with his bowlers of pace, Vos and Bedza, but the ball could not be made to come off the pitch with any sting. The Indian batsmen Merchant and Mushtaq Ali together contributed 124 out of the total of 141 when Merchant was caught by Bedza off Pollard. And so, with the improvement in the weather and the consequent drying out of the somewhat sluggish wicket, the second test developed on brighter lines.